starting with the great name of almighty allah who is the most gracious and most beneficent okay now bait load moves along the bottom of the channel either by rolling sliding or jumping in small leaps uh, so the movement of the uh, the uh, that how the bait load moves is either in the rolling or sliding or in the hooping or jumping pattern then there is a transport uh, transmits its load to static grains below means uh, they tries to uh, transport a uh, load to the uh, the grains that are already in the static condition and grains exchange places with sim, uh, similar particles means if similar particles are there they are jumping and they tries to replace their positions not vertically supported but rest on the bed because there is no any vertical support but uh, due to there is a uh, flow of the water is there because of which the shear stress is generated and uh, they they uh, drag along the uh, with the bed that's why sometimes they jump sometimes they roll also depends on the shape if the if the shape will be of circular then uh, the rolling will be done if the shape is not completely circular then sliding and jumping if the uh, shear or the drag velocity is greater okay now mayer peter and muller equation now for calculating the bed uh, <coughs> for calculating the bed load i will discuss the two equations with which we can find the bed load the very first is the mayer peter muller equation it's a dimensionless equation for any system of the units uh okay where the terms are q s upon q n not upon n raised to power 3 by 2 gamma w x d equals to the 0.047 gamma minus gamma w times t plus 0.25 into uh, gamma w time uh, by g raised to power 1 by 3 uh, into gs uh, gs dash uh, raised to power 2 by 3 so here uh, these terms are defined that what they are Q S to Q ratio is basically the actual discharge to the estimated discharge, assuming balls to be frictionless, and mostly for wide channel, uh, it is, this ratio is taken one. Now n dash to n is the ratio between the value of the Menin's coefficients as it would be obtained on a plain bed to the actual value on the rippled bed. As I said, there will be uh, uh, there can uh, there will be two uh, things. One will be the rippled, and other will be the unrippled. So that's why uh, one uh, one is uh, symbolized with the dash, and other with with simple n. Then gamma w is simply specific weight of the water. Gamma is the specific weight of the sediment. S is the slope of the channel. D is the depth of the water. D is the grain dia. G is the acceleration due to gravity. G dash S is the volume of the sediment transport per unit weight width of the channel. So this is what we will find G S. G S is the bed width that we have to find and uh, we will see how it how this equation uh, i have provided the usage of the equation also through problem so another way of writing this equation is gs is equals to 4700 tau naught n dash upon n times 3 by 2 minus tau c now here another word is two things are coming one is the tau b another is the tau c now tau c is the critical uh, shear uh, critical tractive force tractive force or uh, drag force the same thing that i have been discussing in this that the uh, you know drag force or you know rubbing when the particles are rubbed due to the water flow of the water with the bed then that that shear stress that is producing and causing is to drag along the bed that's basically the 
trick or tractive force but critical when we uh, we say the minimum tractive force at which grain starts to move that's basically the critical uh, critical tractive force which is uh, which is taken in the unit of the kilogram per meter square and for the wide channels we take this uh, we take this condition that is the r is equals to the d and qs upon q this ratio is equivalent to 1 second equation for the calculation of the bed load is the einstein bed load function based on the law of probability involves number of experimental coefficients and assumptions universal relationships that this is phi versus psi and there is also a graph from which we we will calculate these values later on and according to the einstein the probability p for the motion of the so this is basically uh, we will calculate the probability means uh, here we will uh, means number of chances for the motion of the sediment particles and they have integrated and this is the formula after uh, integration we get that is where the terms are iv is the friction fraction of the bed load gs of the diameter d iv is the fraction of the grains of the diameter d gs is the bed load discharge per unit width of the uh, channel uh, we will calculate the bed load per unit width of the channel so uh, then there is a, a gamma w again it's the mass density of the water sigma is the density of the sediment d is the grain size and uh, that's the density of the fluid <clears throat> so these are again some uh, conditions that for uniform soils uh, this i b and i uh, small b will be equal then this these two will be equal then again these two these constants will be equal so there is a relationship between when these two uh, terms will be equal then there is a graph which uh, which we will use to solve this problem and there is also a formula which we can work out which is this one and let's move further <coughs> that's the formula uh, for a uh, graph but that's not clear but i have uh, there is another uh, graph that uh, that clearly shows that I will show you in later next slides.